Hello everyone, it's Mindy Monday Madness and we are painting the cutest little sledding deer. <laughs> He's sledding down the hill. Um, I go over the drawing this and painting this step by step all the way. If you are a Patreon member, you get to have the traceable and a bonus traceable. Yep, bonus time. So head on over there. If you're not a Patreon member, click on the link. Um, just let you know that um, they charge you the first of every month. So if you started today, they're going to charge you today and they will charge you again December 1st. So just keep that in mind. You might want to wait a day or two. So if you have any questions, um, please leave them in the comment section. Also, don't forget to hit the bell notification button. My tutorial is kind of sporadic, like my life. <laughs> it's how I roll. Um, so you really need to hit the bell notification button to know when my tutorial's up. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, for this exercise, I'll go over my supplies. Um, as of usual, it's a three inch square. Um, I'm using my Arches 100% cotton cold pressed paper. For this exercise, you don't necessarily need to do that. I have my paints, I go over them as I use them. I have my, Grum uh, excuse me, my Princeton number eight and number four long round velvet touch series brush. Water jars up here. Um, my palette, I go over my paints as I use them, paper towel, whatnot. So if you're a Patreon member, you'll get the traceable and I have a little bonus traceable. So you could do this little guy, the skating guy. Today we're just doing the sledding guy. So you get a bonus traceable. If you're a Patreon, there's a link right in the description box and on my about page. Um, it's a place that people go and support my channel and each tier has a different pricing. And um, the if you want the t exclusive tutorials, they're the mid tier and up. And the the bottom tutorial is just traceables from my YouTube channel and um, extra traceables and whatnot. So um, I'll also teach you how to draw this little guy. It's pretty simple for me, but maybe not for you. Here's your square, right? Now you just slow the YouTube video down, to try and get the drawing if you can't keep up. And then of course the slope will be back here, right? And then if you wanna turn the paper and we think of the reindeer always is in shapes, right? So he's going to be kind of like a rounded rectangle. Just like that. Let me zoom in a little bit. And you put a little curly cue here for his tail. Then you put the rectangle scarf. And then for his face, it's kind of like, like going to make a circle up and over and then down and then connect it. And you get his little nose, his ears, just little simple bumps like that. And for his antlers, you can just make these very simple antlers like that. And then the legs, just simple lines going down. And his little hoofs are just little squares basically. And then you have the sled, another simple, you know, skinny rectangle. And then a couple of lines going down and then the curly Q. And that is how you draw it. And then trees can make all kinds of trees. It's triangle trees. I did some simple triangle trees. You know, another little one here. And then of course the scarf. Curve it out, connect it, curve it back, curve it out, connect it, curve it back. And then uh, the little eyes and the smile. Voila. So that's how you do that. Um, like I said, you can just, you just put the video in slow-mo and you can see how I draw it. Otherwise, if you're a Patreon member, just download the traceable, you're good to go. Um, I'm just gonna erase some of the marks I have here. So this is pretty straightforward. The reindeer, obviously, if you wanna paint the sky first, the blue, whatever, I think I might do that last. I'm gonna paint the lighter colors first. So I think I'm gonna get the sky slightly darker with some snow. So I'm gonna get the reindeer. This is just, uh, I have a Van Dyke brown I'm gonna grab some of my cadmium yellow deep. Mix those two together. Whatever brown color you wanna mix up, you know, and it doesn't have to be super dark. I'm using my Grumbacker, excuse me, why do I keep saying Grumbacker? I'm staring at my Grumbacker brush, that's why. My Van Dyke, and again, <laughs> my Princeton 8. So, like I said, for this particular exercise, you don't need to have a really expensive piece of paper you can do, the only reason why you'd want this kind of paper is if you want to do a nice bleed on his body. So I'll show you. You can just put it in flat like this. 
I'm just putting the flat color in of his whole entire body part right here and the reason why you'd want this kind of paper over just a generic cheap store paper is I'm going to take some dark brown now mixing up some black and brown and you're just tipping you're just going to tap in you're going to mix up a nice deep dark brown I'm just going to tap in on the bottom here the darker color and here and it should bleed and see how it's bleeding nicely I'm going to have my brush manipulate it a little bit but like I said it's not necessary and you don't have to do that just wanted like a little darker color so I'm just going to fill in his little legs just simply you can go all the way down to the hoof because that's going to be like a black and you can go right on top of that color And then this little face. I don't want the face too dark because I want to be able to see the cute little expression. But again, just filling his face and his little ears. And this is what you would call like a little mini illustration. It's a straightforward just little design for Christmas. See, very simple. You're just filling this in like paint by number kind of situation. I did make this a little bit darker back here. You see, and grab that darker paint and go in here. Voila. I already have a red mixed up. But before I even do that and all this, I'm going to paint um, the snow field. And I'm going to paint that like a light pale blue tone you know because even though it could be white I just want it more colorful so I have my peacock blue here it's fairly bright I mean you might want to just grab an ultramarine and water it down or this I have this great verdier blue which is really pretty really pretty blue um, could do a combo of that so I'm taking the peacock I'm going to add a little bit of brown to it just to dull it down just a touch and you can test out like talk about this all the time testing out the colors and trying to find a piece of scrap here <laughs> I have scrap everywhere but where I need it to be okay here's a piece of scrap you just take a piece of scrap and you test out the color next to do I want it that color mm, maybe not I might add a little magenta to it to bring it back to more of an ultramarine kind of tone. Or I really just love this Verdier Blue. I might just stick some of that in my palette. And we'll water that down and see what we got. It's a sweet blue. And it's mixed in with the other blue, so. See, yeah, I like that blue. The Verdier Blue is really pretty. Okay, I'm going to water that down. It's going to be my little hill color. So I have the tree in there and I have all this stuff in here. I could just cover right over it. But I might not want to cover over the red sled part. Just because it will turn purple when red goes on that. But this is going to be like a gray on this side where the sled is. So I can go right over that if I want to. As long as I can still see my tracing, which I can. Just going to fill this whole little hill in. It will dry lighter too. I'm going to make the this part darker anyway. It doesn't matter if I paint over here where the tree is going to be because that's going to be green and that will be fine if the blue, if the green is over the blue. It's just the red over the blue you're going to make purple. So you want to keep that rectangle that was the top of the sled red 
You don't want to paint over the blue. It will not look pretty. Well, unless you're on a purple sled. You could have a purple sled. Nobody says you can't. So we filled in that whole snowy area, light blue. We can do the, some of the trees now. Um, keep in mind, we're going to do a darker blue up here. So you, you want to paint the lighter colors first and the darker ones second. So I'm going to do like this pretty pale olive green. I'm actually managing to do everything with my Princeton eight long round. If this is too hard for you, just grab the number four, which is much skinnier. I'll probably use that for small details. I like this bright lime color tree. Doing just quite a few of these little triangles here. I'll do the darker one when this blue dries down front. I like those little lime trees. And then for the scarf, um, I might make that red and white. So I have a red already mixed up here. Whatever red you have, just work with that. And I'm just going to put in my stripe. This is just simple. You can do a stripe. You can do like a knitted scarf, whatever you want. And I'm doing kind of a wide stripe. Just looking a little too pink. I'm adding some yellow. Make it more red, red to my magenta. I don't want it pink. I want it red, red. So I'm doing the stripes on the scarf. Just like so. A little too watery still. One good thing about this paper is that it really does soak up well, but sometimes you you have a lot of water, you still have to manipulate taking some of that off, which I'm doing right now. I'm just lifting it up and then tapping it on my paper towel. See this? Oh my goodness. I just realized you guys can't see that. <laughs> so anyway, going backwards. <laughs> <laughs> I flushed in the blue color back here. I left this white. Goodness, guys, I'm so sorry. Um, but, you know, you can figure this out. I used this uh, Verdier blue, really pale. I flushed it all in, left the sled white. Um, I'm just going in, doing the stripes on his um, scarf, just simply. I painted the trees in olive green. Yeah, I sometimes need to look back at my camera. That was really bad of me. When I zoom in, I forget about that sometimes. Okay, so this is pretty dry next to the blue. I can go in and add the red sled. A nice red color. Yeah, before my red was looking a little too pink. Because I mix my red, I don't have a straight out tube red. Although I do have some tube reds, I kind of have fun mixing it. And then I'll grab my smaller brush for this. But, you know, you can go and tweak in and grab the whatever black you have. You know what's a trick, good trick? I like using black wash because you can water it down like watercolor. And it's really intense black if you want a black. Otherwise, the blacks for watercolor do kind of wash out more like a gray. So you want to check and make sure that's still kind of dry. Because if you connect to it too early... It could bleed into the red. And you paint his little black hoofs. And we didn't do his antlers yet. We'll go ahead and do that. I would keep that color a little darker brown than what you did his body. Or you can make it lighter. It doesn't matter. And I'm just going to make this just this curve here, just simple little antlers. You don't even need to draw this out. 
you're basically just taking your brush, just pushing around the color like that, curve, curve, and you got antlers. You can put another little one here. Isn't that cute? And then if you wanted a gray sled silver, you could just done that too. I'm just going to use a little black with a little water. I might want to water it down just a bit to make it more of a dark gray. I know some people don't like to they say, don't use black. That's okay. Sorry. That's their thing. I like to do it. My little cheat. Who wants to spend all day mixing colors to make black? When you can just make black. Grab it. Voila. Now here we get a little detail. I'm going to grab just a deeper red. Just put it on the bottom of this lid here. Like that. Okay, so at this point we want to paint the darker blue ground or because this is dry, we could paint the dark green tree. So I have my olive green. I'll mix some Prussian blue in with that. Touch of the magenta. I'm going to get this deep green tree. I'm just going to do a zigzag tree. Zigzag, see? So I call them zigzag trees. I'll just paint a little tree. You can paint another one. I'm going to put the little stems into these trees. You want to paint another little dark green tree, zigzag tree. I don't have it in the sketch, but as always, I'd like to throw you guys a curveball and I'll paint one out here. <laughs> Just adding some more detail. All right, at this point, I'm going to be, keep, God, I'm falling down. Yeah, that way I'm not always in the frame. Uh, darker blue sky. So I'm going to mix up, kind of get rid of that pretty variety blue. I have my Prussian blue. It's brighter than a navy, so I'm going to tone it down. I'm going to add a little, that black, make it navyish. You can always test it on the strip again. See? Ooh, so it's quite not the color I want. Get a little more black in there. Do you want it deep and dark? Or do you want it brighter? I'm going to throw in a little peacock. Let's see what we got in a little magenta. Let's see if I like this. Hmm, not bad. Maybe a little more magenta. Play around with the blue color you want. See, I'm playing around with my blue color. I want it like dark enough, but you might not see the antlers. So we'll see, we're gonna play around with it. All right, so I'm gonna fill it in. Get a little loose. If it's loose, it'll be lighter. I'm just gonna fill in this whole area or I can just leave a little white space in between the antlers and the paint color so you can see the antlers. See how I'm doing that? I'm not painting it right next to the antlers. I'm leaving a little white space around it. So if you wanted to change it up, you could have done a light color antler and it would have been fine. I'm going to paint over where the nose is, no problem, because black's going to go right on there. So I'm just going to fill all this in. You want to work pretty fast if you want the color to be all seamless without those little um, dried balloons that you see with watercolor. And that just takes practice. It doesn't happen overnight, kind of mixing the paint fast and moving it around fast. I don't want people to get frustrated. So I'm just going to go like this, going fast. But for you, fast might paint over a lot of stuff and maybe that's not a good idea. I'm trying to get careful next to the trees here. Let's 
See, we just fill it all in and go back and fill this area. I'm doing another layer on top. It's coming out too, too light for me. And I feel like I can make the antlers work. So I'm actually going back over it to darken up the color. Because you know, obviously, with watercolor, everything's going to dry pretty light. And right in here. I'm going to go right back over that color so it's much darker. But not super dark. There we go. You can see him. But I feel like the color can handle the little antlers, so I'm going to go close to it. If it's if your color comes out too dark, like I said, leave the white halo around the deer antlers. So with this with the hill now, I want to do a couple of shadows. I have that Verdier blue. I'm gonna mix it up with just a little bit of another color. Put a little couple of shadows. Little streaky shadows coming from the tree. You do not have to do that. I just feel like doing it. Just adds a little something, something. And on his body, too, like I'll just take a darker toned color here and I'll just go like. Just like that. And his little legs too. Again, you don't have to do this. Kind of how I roll. So I have to wait for this to dry. While that's drying, I can paint the little nose and the eyes. Again, just black. Simple, straightforward. Little no Ooh, it's bleeding. Excuse me. You know what? We'll kind of make this dry and come back because otherwise it's going to be a bleeding mess. <laughs> <laughs> All right, pay no attention to the teacher who made a bleeding mess, but this is how we roll. Okay, we're going to paint the little black. Make sure everything's dry before you do this. Don't do what I say. <laughs> and make the little cute little eye upside down and a little smiley face. He's a happy guy. He's in his happy place. So now I'm going to grab some white gouache. If I can find it as I'm talking to you, because I have so many paints over here, it is. But I already have it on my palette, but I'm just gonna grab some fresh squash so I don't have to deal with reactivating it. So I have it on this messy side of my palette. I love my messy palette side. I love all the, the crazy bits of the colors and you never know what you're gonna get and that's the fun part of it. So I have my gouache. You're gonna get some water on this and don't want too much because then it becomes like watercolor. Too little, it's too dry. Do a little phrase. The scarf. Right? If you didn't have a white halo on his nose, put one right there with the white gouache. Now for the trees, before I go ahead and do snow, I'm gonna take that dark green that I had mixed earlier might do little V's in the tree, a little just detail, see? Again, I didn't stick this in the drawing, but these are the things I like to do. Just simply like that. And I think I'm gonna add another little red stripe right here. felt like it was missing something. And then you could add details where the red is kind of darker on the edge here of the scarf. That's getting really minute, really super detailed. I mean, this small, I think it's not necessary. So clean up the brush and we're gonna just do simple snow, snow, snow. Get that wonderful gouache and just dots. 
cute little fun dots. And it's snowing and he's sledding and he's having fun. I put up my tree yesterday and it's all decorated, ready to go. You can have the snow extend to the whole entire blue area. Mine don't look like perfect dots. If you want yours to look like perfect dots, you know what to do, people. So, just a lot of snow. You can have some clusters of snow, big and small. I think that's more realistic, in my opinion. I don't necessarily think it would be good to put the snow all over him because you want to just differentiate between him and the snow. But isn't that like the sweetest thing ever? And like I said, you can go in and add the tweaky little details. Depends on how realistic you want it to get, even though it's just a silly little illustration. And a little bit darker, tweaking the antlers. You know adding some dark shadow by his body. You don't have to do this stuff. Keep it pretty simple. And I think the sled needs to just get a little deeper. Fun red. But that's that. This is the Mini Monday Madness, people. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed it. And don't forget, if you're a Patreon member, you can download the other cute, fun, um, traceable and play around with that and have fun with that and fill it in just similar the same way. Or, hey, change it up. Make everything all blue. Who knows? Um, I hope you guys enjoy this mini Monday madness. Um, don't forget to hit the bell notification button to know my tutorials up. And uh, take care and I'll speak to you soon. Have a great day.